Danganronpa. A body has been discovered! Now then, after a certain amount of time has passed, the class trial will begin! A body has been discovered! Now then, after a certain amount of time has passed, the class trial will begin!
See ya later! <laughs> this cannot be... Let me tell you this. Damn it. Damn it! <laughs> what do you yearn for? Hey. Yep. This is bad. Leave it to me. Damn right. Um. Huh? Hey! Definitely find out. I think. Something like this. How cruel. Just as I thought. <laughs> Nature, the collective will of the world. Damn right. Huh? Like... <laughs> hey! Hmm. 
ना लाइट to the whole story. Well... Hajime. Hey. <laughs> wow. How unfortunate. This, too, must be the will of causality. Um... Well? Fine.
damn right. Like... Well... Actually... That right.
<laughs> I can see it! Go by four dark devas of destruction! Hajime. Right? How mean. Damn it. <laughs> hey.
but... be the will of causality.
始め。That's right. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Well, see?
nốc That's wrong Yep I think Hello there. I see. Hey! Did you call me? Wah wah? What are you gonna do? <laughs> huh? Are you sure?
Bin. Please relax and enjoy the film. Monokuma was born in a remote village full of old people because the death rates outpaced the birth rates. One day, Monokuma was swept up by a tornado created by a helicopter gunship during a routine military exercise and was whisked away to Monami's country. Monokuma wanted to return to his homeland so he could go back to pestering the old people for change. So he began his journey to see the wizard Monami, who was rumored to grant any wish one desires. Along the way, he met a very loyal group of friends. Monokuma met a Monami scarecrow who was missing a brain. When he recommended that she commit suicide, the Monami Scarecrow hanged herself and died. He also met a Monami Lion who was missing her courage, so he pumped her full of arrows. He also met a Monami Tin Man who was missing a heart, so Monokuma sliced her into lumps of iron. After a lot of other stuff happened, Monokuma finally reached the wizard Monami, the great and powerful. Eventually, one thing led to another, and he started beating the crap out of Monami. And in the end, he somehow usurped the kingdom from her. With this, Monokuma enslaved the old people, took their pensions, and lived the rest of his days in luxury. And he lived happily ever after. The
damn right. Like... Well, yeah. Well.
Oh my! Perhaps... Um... You are right. Um... Perhaps... I... Yoko, by chance, are you having trouble wearing your kimono? Stupid! What are you saying? Of course I can do it! Because Mahiru taught me. That's why I can do it on my own. Uh, um, if that is the case, how about you do it someplace where there is a mirror? Do you remember the full-length mirror in the storage room at the music venue? If you do it while standing in front of a large mirror, I am confident you will be successful. Also, shutting yourself in your room like this may be bad for your health. Um... It cannot be! everybody doing? It's me, Monokuma! Yay! Awesome! The class trial's gonna start, you know! So, make sure you guys come to Monokuma Rock ASAP! <laughs> I'll see you soon!
Anthony is such a dumb child. Bye bye. I won't let you. Hey, hey. Huh? D damn it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> How about it? What do you yearn for? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey! No, not that's well now. Now then, let's begin with a simple explanation of the class trial. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is and vote for who done it. If you vote correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong person, I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and that person will earn the right to leave this island. Oh well, who cares about this boring explanation? Let's get on with it already! I don't mind starting the trial, but I don't really have a grasp of how the case played out. You know, because I was asleep the whole time. <laughs> Even if you do grasp it, you're just gonna confuse the heck out of us, aren't you? But Nagito's not alone. I don't really get it either. You're fine. Your head's empty anyway. Empty head? What's wrong with that? Listen up! The emptier your head, the more dreams you can stuff inside it, you know? Anyway, we shouldn't proceed with the trial if those two can't participate in the arguments. Since he's the first witness, why don't we ask Hajime to explain the incident and the sequence of events? Then, let's start with when we split into the hospital team and motel team because of the despair disease. 
The hospital team consisted of Nagito, Ibuki, and Akane, who were infected, and Mikan, Fuyuhiko, and me. The other five on the motel team were myself, Gundam, Kazuichi, Chiaki, and Hyoko. Spending the night at the hospital was prohibited, so Hajime and I had to sleep at our cottages. I woke up at my cottage on the day the incident happened. Mikan came by to wake me up and told me that Nagito had recovered from his symptoms. We immediately headed over to the hospital, and after we confirmed his recovery, I made Mikan rest in the on-call room, since she hadn't slept all night, while I waited in the hospital lobby. And then, I saw the incoming signal light on the surveillance camera blinking before our scheduled time. When I pressed the button to turn on the monitor, what appeared on screen was... A video of someone wearing a hospital gown and a hemp bag on their head, climbing a stepladder. Amazing! That's such a heart-pounding story! And then what did you do, Hajime? I, I tried to stop them, of course. I rushed out of the hospital and ran to where the video was being recorded, the music venue. But it was too late. By the time I arrived, the person wearing the hemp bag on their head was already hanging from the ceiling. I thought I should tell the others right away, so I headed to the motel. Why the motel? Because it was close to the music venue, and unlike the hospital, there were more able-bodied people there. At least, that's what I thought, but the only person who came with me was Chiaki. But I remember feeling a little relieved because not long after, we met up with Mikan and Fuyuhiko. We were also looking for Ibuki since she disappeared from our sight. After I rested for a bit, I started counting everyone at the hospital. And then I noticed Ibuki was gone, so I, I sprinted out of the hospital. Coincidentally, I ran into Fuyuhiko, so I pled with him in various ways to see if he could help me out. Various ways? Don't say it like that and confuse people. After I heard from those two that Ibuki disappeared, I had a feeling she was the person wearing the hemp bag. So I immediately led them to the music venue. But the door wouldn't open. Since we had no other option, the four of us broke down the door. And when that happened, we didn't just find Ibuki's body. We also found Hiyoko's. And not just that. Her body was taped to a pillar. That's when we heard the body discovery announcement. Not once, but twice in a row. And so, we decided to lower the hanged body, didn't we? When we removed the hemp bag, just as we feared, it was Ibuki. So that's how the case played out. Thank you. I am very easily. Well, it's clear what the problem with this case is. What do I know? That is true. Sorry, I'm only being impartial right now. The story I just heard is clearly suspicious. If you're the only one who saw the video and the first one to discover Ibuki's body, then you could be lying as much as you want right now. Lie? Why would I lie? Um, or what might you doubt me? You're not. Come on, prove it. Not the killer. Hajime's testimony. Hajime's testimony is a lie. And the fact that Ibuki hung herself. That would also be a lie. I don't think I can deny that possibility. After all, Hajime is the only witness. Why would Hajime lie? Well, obviously, because he's the killer. Did Hajime kill both of them? The fact that the bodies were imitating the movie. Means it probably is Hajime's fault. Hajime's test is suspicious. If Hajime's test is a lie, then the fact that Ibuki... That would also be a lie. I don't think I can deny that part. 
After all, Hajime is the only witness. Why would Hajime lie? Well, obviously, because he's the killer. Did Hajime kill both of them? The fact that the No, that's wrong! I'm the killer! I mean, there's no way I'd be able to imitate that movie. Of course you're not. I already knew that. Huh? Before the incident, Hajime had never watched that movie. His invitation ticket is proof of that. Each we received one ticket, and they're marked with a stamp that shows the date and time. Isn't that right, Monokuma? Yes! No mistakes there! Which means there's no way Hajime, who never saw the movie, could commit murders that imitated it. Or did anyone tell him what happens in the movie? Of course no one did, right? Hold on a sec! You're the one who brought this up in the first place! Nagito, what are you doing? Well, since we're opening with your witness testimony, I thought we should solidify the foundation. It also provides a good warm-up. What warm-up? This isn't a game, you know. <laughs> Don't get mad. I just think warming up is really important. Especially since this isn't a game. What a waste of time. Well, I knew it would turn out like this anyway. Now then, since we know Hajime's testimony is reliable, let us move on to the arguments. So this means Ibuki definitely climbed the stepladder all by herself, right? Yeah, I'm positive. Then that seals it! Ibuki committed suicide! If Ibuki committed suicide, then who killed Hiyoko? Hmm, a murder coincidentally occurring in the same place as a suicide... Ain't possible, huh? Like I said before, it's pretty clear what the problem with this case is. The killer murdered Hiyoko while Hajime was gone. So all we gotta do is establish who could have possibly done that. Then let's ask Hajime. How long would you say you were away from the music venue? I couldn't have been gone for more than 10 minutes. So they killed Hiyoko and taped her up within 10 minutes? There's no way that's possible. That's why the killer stalled for time by making the music venue a closed room. Hmm? Huh? What do you mean a closed room? The killer blocked the venue door from the inside to try and keep us from entering right away. However, that door is the only entrance to the music venue, right? If they blocked the door from the inside, the killer would not have been able to leave either. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Which means, when we broke down the venue door, the killer was still inside. <gasps> they were? If that's the case, the only suspicious people are those who don't have an alibi for that time. And that's you two! Sonia and Kazuichi. Me too? What the hell? Why's it gotta be us? The others all have alibis. Chiaki, Mikan, Hajime, and I all broke down the venue door together. Gundam met up with Hajime at the motel right before that. And if Akane and Nagito were laid up in the hospital, the only person that leaves is one of you. There's another person who doesn't have an alibi. You know, Nekomaru. Me too! Hey, why are you talking like... Huh? You're kidding, right? You're not up to something weird, are you? <laughs> Please stop making bad jokes. Anyway, if the killer was hiding inside the venue, we should obviously doubt the people who don't have alibis. What a way of backing us into a wall! Is this his professional skill? The killer was still inside the music venue. By locking the door from the inside, they tried to keep us from getting in. It seems they were trying to stall for time. How did they lock the door? That door should not have had a lock. The lock was on the floor in front of the door. Are you talking about the broken drumstick? 
You can use that as a bolt to lock the door. By doing that, the killer who was hiding inside waited till we gathered together and suddenly appeared. So they look like they had just rushed over. I have seen this in serial crime dramas. The killer was still inside the music venue. By locking the door from the inside, they tried to keep us from getting in. It seems they were trying to stall for time. How did they lock the door? That door should not have had a lock. The lock was on the floor in front of the door. Are you talking about the broken drumstick? You can use that as a bolt to lock the door. By doing that, the killer who was hiding inside waited till we gathered together and suddenly appeared. So they look like they had just rushed over. I have seen this in serial crime dramas. The killer was still inside the music venue. By locking the door from the inside. No, that's wrong! Wait a sec. There's also a possibility that the door was locked from the outside. From the outside? How? There was a semi-transparent glob stuck to the venue door. Maybe that's what they used. Semi-transparent glob. Like rubber, maybe? I see! That semi-transparent glob must have been glue. Glue? Yeah, I think so too. It had a firm gel-like chewiness. And I could smell workshop chemicals the moment I put it in my mouth. Based on all that, I'm certain it was glue. I didn't know glue was edible. I believe it is not something one typically eats. That glue was only applied to the areas where both doors touched. By pouring it in the gaps of the closed door, they must have sealed the venue door from the outside. And thanks to that, a glob of glue was left where the door was stuck. Yep, it fits perfectly. But if you just stick them together with glue, you'd be able to break down the door easily, you know? That doesn't really matter. The killer only did that to make us think the door was locked from the inside. What'd you say? First of all, didn't that drumstick we found seem really obvious? Almost unnaturally so? It was so obvious that it makes more sense to think the killer placed it as a diversion. Are you saying the drumstick was a trap the killer set on purpose? Then I... I totally fell for that fucking trap! Apologize to Miss Sonia! And me! However, you're not allowed to slice open your stomach this time! In a quarrel, both sides are to blame! That's why it's better to just have no sides at all! So... During the 10 minutes Hajime left the venue, the killer murdered Hiyoko and created a closed space? And they also taped her up after killing her, right? Even quick work has limits. Oh, What unimaginable speed for a slow poke like me. If they couldn't have done it while Hajime was away from the venue, they must have done it earlier than that. But when Hajime got to the venue, only Ibuki's body was there, right? And when you went back with everyone else, Kyoko's body was there too, right? But it's possible that the body was just revealed at that time, when Kyoko was actually killed earlier. Just revealed? Of course, the body wasn't revealed on its own. The killer did that too. Here, I have proof. Hmm, that scrap of paper 
Is that what we found in the baton lighting at the music venue? That's right, but just what is this scrap anyway? Wallpaper in the storage room? In the music venue storage room, there should have been black wallpaper that's the same color as that scrap. There was also a tear along the edge of the wallpaper, wasn't there? If so, you're right. If you overlay the scrap that was caught on the lighting with the tear in the wallpaper, see? It fits perfectly. I see. So the scrap that was caught on the baton lighting was originally part of the wallpaper. And what's wrong with that? Does it have something to do with Hyoko's body disappearing? A mere nobody like me isn't important enough to answer that. But if you guys were exceptional enough to identify that scrap of paper, you can figure this out easily.
all coming together! I got it! Kyoko's body was hidden before we found it! But it would have taken quite a long time to tape up a hidden body. No, the body was already taped up and the killer hid it, along with the pillar using the wallpaper. What? They hid the pillar? Yeah, by wrapping the wallpaper around the pillar, the killer was able to create a slightly larger pillar. So when I first discovered Ibuki's body, Kyoko's body was already there. However, because it was concealed within a slightly larger pillar, I didn't realize that at the time. Well, that's understandable. I mean, it makes sense that you'd notice Ibuki's body right away. So they used the baton lighting on the ceiling to hang the wallpaper? The baton lighting forms a perfect circle around the pillar. So using it to hang the wallpaper totally fits. Then, the reason the wallpaper was covered in so many stickers was to make it look like that pillar. That's how they hid Hyoko's body, and then peeled off the wallpaper as soon as I left the music thing. But the killer made a mistake. They accidentally ripped off a piece of the wallpaper. And because of that, a scrap was left on the baton lighting. The killer must have been in a hurry. Their plan took too long. Hajime could have walked in on it. But going to the trouble of hiding the body and the pillar is very cold and risky. But the crime itself would be much easier to pull off since they don't have much to do while Hajime's gone. They just have to peel off that wallpaper and stash it in the storage room. It's not that big of a deal. Then, when was Hyoko actually killed? Good point. And on that note, it's about time we shed some light on those imitation murders. Um, you mentioned imitation murder more than once. But what is that? Are you kidding me? You haven't seen my masterpiece? The Wizard of Monomy 2.5D? Hey! Don't put my likeness in your movies without my permission! You're pretty noisy for someone who eats mothballs! I don't eat mothballs! I just enjoy looking at them! I knew it! There are so many similarities, it must have been intentional! Ibuki's death by hanging matches the Scarecrow's death from the movie. Not just that, but Hyoko getting taped up after her death matches the lion's death. It's as if both crimes were replicas of scenes from the movie, although the mutilated Tin Man was omitted. But why did the killer go to all this trouble in the first place? Based on what we know, the reason the killer chose these imitations isn't that difficult to figure out. I see! The reason the killer imitated two of the murders from the movie was so he'd mix up the killing order. Then... Kyoko was actually killed before Ibuki? A valid line of reasoning. Yeah, it's valid. The condition of Ibuki's body suggests that as well. What do you mean? <laughs> if you're going to cry and beg like that, then I guess I'll hear about the condition of Ibuki's body. I'm not even crying. I will let you sob as much as you want later. Just hurry up and tell me before I change my mind. What a jerk! Oh, I see. You want me to explain it to you, right? Because you don't understand what I'm saying, right? An even bigger jerk? Impossible! Look, Ibuki died because she hanged herself, right? That means when she was still alive, her feet were touching the floor. What's wrong with that? But, it seems Ibuki was still standing when Hyoko was killed. That would mean Hyoko was killed before Ibuki. <laughs> How light. Your words are so light, as light as the sylph's feather. 
<laughs> your opponent is out of your league. It is too absurd to try to perplex me so inadequately. Man, he's being annoying again. First and foremost, you claim Ibuki's feet were touching the floor when Hiyoko was killed. How can a low-class creature with no psychic abilities like you know something like that? Because she was doing something that's only possible if her feet were on the floor. It seems you suffer from a pathetic delusion. You're one to talk! When Hyoko died, Ibuki's feet were on the floor. I am telling you to present your evidence! Did you see her walking? If her feet were on the floor... Was there any sign she stepped on something? Were there even any footprints at the crime scene? Maybe her feet were on the floor. But she was like sitting or something. So instead, there'd be a mark on her ass! Weak, 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 I say! It doesn't even pierce my heart! When Hyoko died, Ibuki's feet were on the floor. I am telling you to present your evidence! Did you see her walking? If her feet were on the floor, was there any sign she stepped on something? I agree with that! Just as Sonya said, Ibuki stepped on something. That something was blood. There were faint blood stains on the soles of her slippers. That is not Ibuki's blood, right? She suffered no external injuries. Then it's Hyoko's blood! Hyoko's only wound was a fatal slice on her neck. And she died almost instantly, right? If Ibuki stepped on her blood... It means Ibuki was still standing when Hyoko was mortally wounded. Which means Ibuki was still alive at the exact moment Hyoko was killed. Don't underestimate the power of the evil eye! <laughs> Is that it? A shepherd dressed in his Sunday's finest still reeks of lamb, Hajime Hinata. Does that mean you have a rebuttal? Does that mean you have a rebuttal? Hm. That's a good line. But are you sure you're sure? If I show you how serious I am, this world might be destroyed, you know. You're so frightened, you can't even make a sound. It seems you've realized our difference in status. However, the time for conviction starts now! You better entertain me to the fullest! You're saying the blood on the booby speed belongs. Ha! Ah, impossible! Try to remember the crime scene. There was no blood. You can't step on blood that was never there. <laughs> Just about one minute you can see a nice nightmare. You're saying the blood on Ibuki's feet belongs. Ha! Ah, impossible! Try to remember the crime scene. There was no blood on the floor. Allow me to cut through those words. The reason there was no blood on the floor is because the killer wiped it away afterward. Don't say such foolish things! You don't have proof of that at all! Yes, I do. You look closely. There's a streak on the floor where blood was wiped away. When the killer tried to hide Yoko's body, they probably cleaned the blood at the same time, but... Ibuki must have already stepped in it, and the killer probably didn't even realize it. The reason they wiped off the blood on the floor was so we'd mix up the order of the murders, right? Even if they're able to hide Kyoko's body, 
It'd be bad if her blood was left out in the open. Plus, Ibuki's body was left out in the open, and it wasn't bleeding from any open wounds at all. Yoko's body was probably wrapped in duct tape to stop her bleeding. Actually, the bleeding will stop once the heart stops beating. But aside from Mikon, none of us were aware of that fact, so the killer probably did not know it either. Maybe... the heater was running inside the music venue so it would screw with Mikon's autopsy? That's right! I didn't know the time of death because of the heater! The time of death wasn't mentioned in the Monokuma file, just to keep concrete evidence from us. Yup. Since we have all this evidence, there's no one else who wants to object, right? Then it's decided. Yoko was killed before Ibuki. It appears that it is wiser to retreat for now. Fine then. But regardless of good or evil, there's no deceit in upholding one's convictions. Can't you just shut up and back off? Now then, let us resume our debate. Ah, wait a sec. There's something I want to run by Monokuma first. Huh? Again? Didn't something like this happen last time, too? Hey, if the victim actually committed suicide, what are we supposed to do? The same as always! You have to vote for who the killer is! Think about it! A suicide means you've killed the most important existence of all! Yourself! Unfortunately, that means there's no blacken to punish, but... I guess in a pinch, I can always punish Monami. Why me? Um, Nagito? What do you mean? If the victim actually committed suicide? Well, I mean, I understand Hyoko's death. But I'm wondering if Ibuki was really murdered. For example, it's possible Ibuki killed Hyoko and then committed suicide due to a guilty conscience, right? That's totally impossible! Then she never would have killed her to begin with! She was afflicted by the despair disease, remember? That means anything can happen. But if Ibuki's the killer, she wouldn't have been able to falsify the sequence of the murders, right? After Hajime saw the hanged body, the sudden appearance of Hyoko's body soon after means the killer had to be alive at that time. Then she was alive! <gasps> when Hajime first discovered Ibuki, she was just pretending to be dead. If she waited until Hajime left, that's when she could have made her move and mess with the crime scene. She hanged herself, remember? There's no fucking way she could have faked that. And if she was going to fake her death, I think she wouldn't have chosen hanging. Her body would have been defenseless in that state. If anyone touched her, that alone would have ruined her plan. Hmm, I see. So that means... There's no doubt that someone killed those two. I'm glad. Now I'm free to search for the killer. What the heck? Ah, there's still one more issue on my mind. If Ibuki didn't commit suicide, just what was that video Hajime saw? According to that video you saw, Ibuki was by herself when she climbed the stepladder, right? Then does that mean someone forced her to do it? Forced? Perhaps they used hypnotism or something? I don't know anything about that. Don't say it all proud. Uh, um, putting that aside, it seems obvious that the killer did something. So, maybe we should figure out who was able to do whatever that was. Oh, an alibi. Then our plan is to destroy the weakest alibi. 
Since Hajime has seen the video, it is clear what time the crime took place. Uh, but just to be sure, that surveillance camera doesn't have a record function, right? It's a cheap-ass surveillance camera, you know? There's no way it'd have some kind of sweet recording feature. Then, the video Hajime saw was actually live? What time did Hajime see that video? I saw it at the hospital, right before Monokuma's morning announcement. And I saw the body at the music venue a little after Monokuma's announcement. Hmm. So Ibuki hanged herself right before Monokuma's announcement. And since we established that Yoko was killed before Ibuki, that means the time that the murders occurred was before and during the announcement. Then we just have to find the person who doesn't have an alibi during that time? Now then, I shall issue my decree. Let Operation Destroy the Weakest Alibi commence! We can exclude the sick people like me and Akane, right? And what about the others? Right before the morning announcement, I was totally sleeping in my motel room! I think everyone at the motel was doing that. So everyone who stayed at the motel doesn't have an alibi. What about you guys? I was where I was supposed to be, my own cottage. That's not an alibi. Aside from those afflicted by the disease, if nobody has an alibi then, Operation Destroy the Weakest Alibi has failed! We can exclude the sick people like me and Akane, right? And what about the others? Right before the morning announcement, I was totally sleeping in my motel room! I think everyone at the motel was doing that. So everyone who stayed at the motel doesn't have an alibi. What about you guys? I was where I was supposed to be, my own cottage. That's not an alibi! Aside from those afflicted by the disease, if nobody has an alibi... No, that's wrong! Hold on. Not all of us are missing an alibi. In fact, Mikan and I both have alibis. You... you two have alibis? Up until I saw that hanging video, Mikan and I were actually together for a while. We even woke up together that morning! Hey, what kind of situation is that? <laughs> I accidentally fell asleep on top of Hajime. Too much info. It's not like that! She just came to tell me Nagato's condition had improved. And we went to the hospital together afterward. So we were together until right before the announcement. I get it. You guys have alibis. If that's the case, the killer must be someone else. It's better if we think about it like that. The killer decided to falsify the murder sequence to hide the actual time of the crime anyway. So it's inevitable that an alibi for both before and during the morning announcement would be very important. Hmm. It feels like Operation Destroy the Weakest Alibi has backed us into a corner instead. But... Committing an imitation murder, is that really all it was? Faking the time the crime occurred by falsifying the murder sequence, hiding their alibi in the process... Was that the only reason the killer made both bodies imitate the movie? Are you saying there was another reason? I feel really bad for confusing you guys so much, but that's how I feel. I think the killer had a completely different reason for falsifying the murder sequence. This 
disappointment. Um... I'm Monami. Once again, I've been put in such an unreasonable situation. Seriously, he's like the king of unreasonableness. Why did it turn out like this? We were supposed to have a fun, friendly school trip, but it turned out all bloody instead. No! This definitely cannot be allowed. That's why I want you to remember this. Everyone, do your very best. Don't lose to yourself. And don't forget to save frequently. Huh. It suddenly got quiet in here. Did I confuse you? If so, I wish I could die from self-loathing. Man, this again. If that's the case, it would have been just dandy if they had gone ahead and killed me too. If that happened, the imitation would have been perfect. So why didn't they do that? Well, it's against the rules to kill three people in the first place. That rule is too harsh. I couldn't get killed because of that. Seriously, just shut up already! Shut up forever! But I'm thinking about it again, and... He's totally right. It feels incomplete. Because they didn't kill three people like the movie did? That's only because of Monokuma's rule. It's not just that. Come on, try to remember the content of the movie. About the lion that got killed second. That's the one Hyoko's body was imitating, right? Hmm. Even though we're calling it an imitation, the lion was actually pinned by arrows, right? But Hyoko's body was suspended by common household duct tape. Maybe they just used a common substitute because it was too difficult to imitate the arrows. Well, that's probably it, but... that attitude is what makes this feel incomplete. If falsifying the murder sequence was the killer's plan from the very beginning, they should have taken steps to properly imitate it. But if we never realized it was a half-assed imitation, their entire plan would have been completely useless. What are you trying to say? Are you saying the imitation wasn't planned? I'm saying, Hyoko's murder wasn't. What? Um, I understand that imitation wasn't enough, but aren't you making a bunch of assumptions? It's not just the poor imitation. There are also other strange details. Strange details? Like what? Like, for example, why did Hyoko go to the music venue? So, you're saying the truth behind Hyoko's murder is hidden? I have no freaking clue what you're trying to say! However, this is getting quite interesting. My four dark devas of destruction are getting riled up. Maybe the killer summoned her. If that's not it... Maybe she got abducted by the killer. No, maybe... She went of her own free will. Or... She was guided by the will of causality. Why did Hyoko... Go to the music venue? There's no way we'd know that! 
Maybe the killer summoned her. If that's not it, maybe she got abducted by the killer. No, maybe. She went of her own free will. I agree with that. It's just as Sonia said. She went to the music venue of her own free will. So, exactly as I assumed. If no one called for her, then why did she go? Yoko locked herself in her room because she was being overly cautious of the despair disease, you know? I don't think a person like that would leave their room just because someone called for them. There's no way she got abducted? Yoko locked the room she was staying in before she went out. If she was forcibly taken from her room, there's no way she would have had time to lock it. The killer could have locked her door, right? Just to hide the fact Hiyoko got abducted. Then they couldn't have hidden her room key that deep in her kimono. They would have put it somewhere more obvious. Otherwise, there's no point in messing with the crime scene if nobody finds the key. At the time, you were the one who actually took out the key, right? Then something like that... I won't move! Are you saying my gut was wrong? This is be my first and last highlight of the day. Why won't you just let me shine already? No, that's not the issue. Shut up! Enough with your fancy talk. I'll shut you up right now. Yoko was locked inside her room, right? She definitely got abducted or something. The killer forced their way into Hiyoko's room. Forcibly abducted her! The girl is so small and weak -like. And that's why the killer targeted her! But Hiyoko's room was locked. The key was deep inside her kimono, remember? It's more likely that Hiyoko locked the door herself. The killer was the one who locked the door! So what if the key was in her kimono? Maybe the killer just put it there later! There's no reason for the killer to put the key in Hyoko's kimono. The killer probably didn't realize she even had the key. Hold on! Try remembering Hyoko's box! Her kimono was all messed up! There's only one reason her kimono would be that messed up. She fought the killer! Allow me to cut through those words! Kyoko's kimono was messed up was because she wasn't able to properly wear it. Wear her kimono? Yeah, it's also the reason why she decided to go out on her own. Kyoko seemed to be really struggling with wearing her kimono. I believe that was one of the reasons she locked herself in her room. That is why I informed her. I told her that there was a full-length mirror at the music venue, and I suggested that she use it. Then, the reason her kimono was messed up wasn't because she fought the killer. Yeah, she went to the venue on her own just to fix her messed up kimono. I, I get it. I lost. Boil me, burn me, take off my clothes, do whatever you want to me. Ajima, now's your chance. Make her admit defeat. Or better yet, make her do a little something something. Then... The killer probably couldn't have assumed that Hiyoko would go to the music venue. Though that may not apply to Sonya, since she provided Hiyoko with that information. Though I knew she would go there, there is no way I could have predicted when she would arrive. Don't go doubting this Sonya, you cretin! I'll put you and your hamsters six feet under! <laughs> Kazuichi, it seems you have quite the fashion sense. Do you want me to incinerate your clothes? Perhaps I could do that while you're wearing them. Gundam, please stop! For his sake! Huh? What do you mean, for my sake? Of course! I've already overlooked no less than ten opportunities to kill you. Even if the killer couldn't predict it, why did Hyoko get killed in the music venue? The only thing I can think of is... it was an unfortunate coincidence. When she went to the venue by herself, 
She was probably just unlucky and walked in on the crime scene. She was killed so there wouldn't be any loose ends? It probably happened when the killer was preparing to kill Ibuki. The killer most likely had already placed a hemp bag over her head. And without hesitation... Killed Hyoko. Because the killer used that coincidence for their crime, it made this case even trickier. That's the reason they imitated the movie to falsify the murder sequence. Which means that low-down scoundrel didn't plan on committing imitation murders at first. Then what was the killer actually planning to do? They've been cunning this far. There's no way they'd kill Ibuki without a plan. Do you have any ideas? Damn, we don't know the most important part. Hey, Nagito, any ideas? Hey, how long are you gonna stay quiet? Oh, am I allowed to speak? <laughs> I'm so happy I'm getting goosebumps! Everyone actually needs help from scum like me! So what do you think? I was thinking about it while I had my mouth shut. But now I'm finally able to come to a conclusion. Ibuki definitely didn't commit suicide! Huh? What are you talking about? I thought there might be a possibility that she faked her death and tampered with the crime scene. But now I remember! There was blood on Ibuki's slippers! So if she faked her death, and walked around the music venue tampering with the crime scene, there'd be bloody footprints left in various places throughout the venue. So that's why I think there's no way she faked her death. There's no way Ibuki committed suicide! You know, we already finished talking about that a while ago. Huh. Really? That's annoying. I guess I should just awkwardly laugh about it then. Heh. <laughs> Heh. Are you freaking kidding me? There's no limit to how useless you can be! That's strange. That's very strange. This is strange? What's strange? I can prove it with this! If Ibuki used the stepladder to hang herself, it's strange that there weren't any footprints on it. Huh? There weren't? Yeah, that stepladder was completely clean. No footprints or bloodstains at all. Do you notice such a small detail? How amazing! This is truly the talent of a chosen ultimate! But, didn't you say you saw that video of Ibuki climbing the stepladder? Then, I think there's no doubt that she really did climb it. Unless there was something funny about that video. I see. So there was some kind of trick arranged in that video, hmm? But that's something only Hajime would know, since he's the only one who saw that video. Hajime, I leave it in your hands. As long as I leave this to you, I won't tell you to do your best, but... Oh well, you should get started already. Yeah, I'll definitely try. Right, I remember now. There was definitely something strange about that video. Can you explain it to us? What's strange is that stepladder I mentioned earlier. It's true that the steps of that stepladder weren't dirty, but on one side, there was a bloodstain, 
right on the left side of the stepladder. However, that contradicts the video I saw at the hospital. There weren't any bloodstains on the stepladder in the video. It was completely clean. That is truly strange. If the video showed the moment of Mbuki's death, then Hyoko should have already been dead by that point. Even so, the fact is the stepladder had blood on it at the actual crime scene. But the stepladder in the video was completely bloodless. And there's no way the video was recorded in advance. If that's the case, the only thing I can think of is... It's possible those two stepladders were completely different. Wait, are you saying there were two stepladders? But where would you find another stepladder? There was only one stepladder in the music venue. Then one of the stepladders was somewhere other than the music venue. <laughs> what do you mean? You're suggesting the stepladder in the video isn't the only thing that's different. Am I right? That's amazing, Chiaki! All that gaming has given you incredible deduction skills! Is it okay to say that? Um, what are you two talking about? Besides the stepladder, the filming location must have been different too.
What do you mean? I mean the video I saw was not filmed at the music venue. It was filmed somewhere else. But the hospital monitor is supposed to display footage captured by the music venue camera, you know? Then, there's a possibility that the killer also tampered with the surveillance camera unit. All coming together. That's it. The killer just brought the camera from the music venue. With it, they made me think it was a live feed from the venue when it was actually from somewhere else. Then only the monitor was left in the music venue? Yes, at least when I first discovered Ibuki's body. But when Hyoko's body appeared, the killer probably put the camera back, too. That means you should have realized that from the start and made this easier on all of us. He did discover the body. I doubt his attention was focused on the camera. Well, that's true, but... In order to hide that the camera was missing, the killer did one more thing to the remaining model. Killer smashed the monitor to pieces, destroying it. As long as it was in pieces, you wouldn't be able to tell if the camera was actually there or not. My attention was so focused on the body that even I couldn't have noticed something like that. And the moment Hajime left the music venue, the killer put back the camera they took. And they destroyed it and left that in pieces as well. It's easy to say it was filmed somewhere else, but the surveillance camera's connection wasn't that strong. Despite Kazuichi's desperate repair efforts, it seems it could not transmit from the hospital to the motel. The fact that it was able to connect between the hospital and the music venue is amazing enough.
possible that it was filmed at the hospital's conference room? Huh? Conference room? But the hospital and the music venue look completely different. That's exactly why the killer did something to make those two places resemble each other. resemble the other. Did the conference room look like the music venue? Or did the music venue look like the conference room? Or did they make some kind of set? He might have tampered with the camera. I still can't believe he mixed up the filming locations. Hajime, you're pretty stupid. There's no way the conference room and the music venue look the same. Which place resembled the other? Did the conference room look like the music venue? Mm -hmm. Or did the music mm -hmm. venue look like the conference room? Or did they make some kind of set? They might have tempered. I still can't believe Hajime, you're pretty stupid. There's no way the conference and the music venue look this. Which place resembled the other? Did the conference room look like the music? Mm -hmm. Or did the music mm -hmm. look like the conference room? Or did they make some kind of set? They might have tampered with the camera. I still can't believe he mixed up the filming locations. Hajime, you're pretty stupid. Which place resembled the other? Did the conference room look like the music venue? Or did the music... That must be it! What the killer did was... Make the music venue, the crime scene, look like the conference room. They did that by using the black curtain hanging at the back of the stage. From what I remember... There used to be a really flashy curtain, but after the incident, it somehow became a plain black curtain that didn't seem to be the right size. That's right! It's so half-assed, just like Monami. Oh yeah? Well, your face looks stupid! That curtain was hung so the music venue would look like the conference room? In actuality, even though the curtain in the conference room doesn't stand out, it is a black light blocking curtain that's long enough to reach the floor. I see. The conference room. Indeed, the floor of that room is... the same color as the music venue stage. So the killer chose the conference room because they realized the floor match. Matching floors, matching curtains. I guess it makes sense you'd mistake the two. But that's not all. There should be something else the killer did to tamper with the evidence. Probably. I can prove it with this! You're referring to the candle and the music video, right? In the video I saw, a candle was used for light. If you think about it, it's pretty strange. The music venue has good light, so there's no reason to even use candlelight. But wouldn't they have done it to make it feel creepier? That might have been another reason, but... The main reason was probably to tamper with evidence. The lighting in the conference room and the music venue are so different. They couldn't be used during filming. 
that's why the killer used a candle as film lighting instead. Which means... Are you saying the candle in the music venue wasn't actually used? That candle was likely placed there just to make me think it was the same candle that was used in the video. With candlelight, you can't see things in that much detail. Maybe they were going for that effect. With that cheap-ass camera, it won't capture much in a dark area. As long as this all matches up, it should be no problem to say this is the site. The video I saw wasn't filmed at the music venue. It was actually filmed at the hospital conference room. If I'd found proof that evidence in the conference room was altered, we would have reached an answer sooner. But it appears the killer already covered that up, so I didn't find anything when I went there. But there's no mistake. That's the only place within the connection range of the surveillance camera. The motel would have been too far, and the interior design of the movie theater is too distinctive. But this must be a surprising turn of events for Hajime. You never suspected that the video you saw in the hospital was being filmed in the conference room. The incident isn't happening at the scene of a crime, it's occurring in the conference room. Um, if Ibuki's hanging video was filmed at the hospital's conference room, then was Ibuki killed at the conference room too? No, that's not possible. Right after Hajime saw that video, he discovered Ibuki's body at the music venue. The person wearing the hint bag in that video wasn't Ibuki. It was the killer pretending to be Ibuki. The killer put on a hospital gown, wore a hint bag on their head, and was only pretending to be the victim. By that time, the real Ibuki must have already been killed. The actual time of death must have been earlier. Probably around midnight or dawn to avoid witnesses. If they took Ibuki from the music venue to the hospital to kill her, there's no way it happened during the day. But why did the killer go to the trouble of making a fake video just so Hajime could go to the crime scene? The reason the killer made a fake video... There's only one possibility I can think of. And if I examine that possibility thoroughly, and naturally, the killer's identity will reveal itself. Huh? You fiend! Are you saying you already know who the killer is? You're the only one! You're the killer, aren't you? Like I said, aren't you the killer who murdered Ibuki and Hyoko? Possible? A chick like her is the killer? She couldn't even kill a fly. In fact, the fly would probably kill her first. She, she, she's right! A, a clumsy slowpoke like me killing someone? That's completely out of the question! But we're the only ones. Thanks to that video, we're the only ones who have the advantage of an alibi. An alibi? Was that the killer's goal? Now that you mention it, you guys brought that up earlier. Only Hajime and me can't have an alibi. It's just a coincidence! But you're the only one who could have filmed that video in the hospital conference room. Is that also a coincidence? <laughs> At that time, 
You said you were going to the on-call room, but you actually went to the conference room. That's when you put on a hospital gown that you prepared in advance, put the bag on your head, and began filming. By doing that, you made up a video that showed Ibuki trying to hang herself at the music video. You showed that to me. <laughs> Furthermore, I saw that video at the hospital lobby. If someone wants to go to the conference room from outside, they have to pass through the lobby. So it's impossible that someone who wasn't already in the hospital went to the conference room to film. Not only that, the others in the hospital, Akane and I, were both delirious from the despair disease. So that must mean... Please wait a second! It's not literally impossible. Can't you give a better defense than that? She shows she can't even do that. Hey, you sure this chick is really the killer? R wrong! Y it's totally wrong! It's not what you think! D just like Akane said, it is really hard to tie it all together. I mean, Mikon is the killer? I agree. It is truly difficult to believe someone could be killed by such a slow-witted woman. That slow-witted remark is not necessary. <laughs> it's fine. I've been like this for a long time. In a tournament for social punching bags, I'd easily win first place with my soft reputation. <laughs> Even I can't deny that. How many times do I have to What do you say, Hajime? Do you still believe this woman is the killer? Mm, do you hate me that much, Hajime? Hey, Hajime! Uh, um... Hold on a minute. Well, I know I'm being intrusive and all, and I mean, I have no place to say this. I missed all of the critical parts, and I doubt I have anything worth saying at an important time like this. What are you saying? But still, there's definitely no way I can overlook the kill this time. I thought it was suspicious all along, from the very beginning. Investigating with the suspect in mind creates a different result than investigating with no leads. Hey, what are you trying to say? Well, thanks to that, I was able to discover a truth that nobody else knows. <laughs> are you serious? I've been so focused on everybody else in this trial. But I guess now's a good time to say it, right? You better not have kept quiet on purpose. This isn't a game, you know! Actually, this is a game! Please don't say such controversial statements! Well, what do you know, Nagito? Well, it's nothing big, really. Only a small, decisive clue that points to the killer. Hey, That's a huge deal! A decisive clue? Does something like that really exist? Let's take a look, shall we? Regarding the rope Ibuki was dangling from, this rope was supplied by the supermarket, right? There weren't any ropes inside the music venue. Again with the supermarket? That place is a hot spot for criminal goods. If they got it at the supermarket, that means it was brand new, right? What's wrong with that? I want you to take a close look at this rope. And keep in mind that it's brand new. It's near the middle of the rope. It's frayed, as if it was rubbed strongly. But why is it like this? The loopy bookie used to hang herself is on one end of the rope, and the part of the rope that hung from the baton lighting is on the other end. Hey, you're taking too long. What's wrong with the rope being frayed? It means, well, 
From what I can infer, I think the rope was used like this. The killer wrapped the rope around Ibuki's neck, pulled both ends at full strength, and strangled her. The center of the rope is frayed because that's the part they used to strangle Ibuki. I've been listening to you for a while, and it sounds like you knew about this rope clue all along. What exactly did you say to me during the investigation? Not everyone cooperates at a class trial. Those who lie and conceal the truth will obviously be here too. Just like this case's killer. I was just copying them a little bit. More importantly, what was all that about the rope? The killer strangled Ibuki. And then... And then... I finished speaking. Huh? How is that a decisive clue? Huh? You didn't notice it. I thought I made the decisive clue very clear. Ibuki didn't die from hanging. She was strangled to death. That's basically the same thing. Though hanging and strangling seem similar, they're very different. The scars they leave would look different too. Scars? You mean the rope burn, right? But we believed it was from a hanging. Why would that be? Did we fall for someone's lie? Must be it! So that's what happened. We've been falling for the killer's lie this whole time. You said Ibuki hanged herself, but that was a complete lie, wasn't it, Nikon? told us the wrong cause of death. You lied, didn't you? <laughs> you should have been able to tell the difference between hanging and strangling just by looking. You, Mikon, the ultimate nurse. Please, wait! First of all, I'm not a coroner, so I don't have the medical knowledge to identify injuries like that. That's why... You were right, and you have been a great help to us so far. But even a drunk medical student can notice the difference between a hanging and strangulation. I'm not taking her side or anything, but being clumsy and unskilled in this area could lead to a mistake. He's totally right! <laughs> I'm such a clumsy mess, and I got so careless! Mikan nursed me till I got better. There's no way I'm gonna doubt her. Don't you think her devotion to nursing is what helped her draw Ibuki to her death? Huh? And if not, her symptoms were still very serious and caused her to believe what anybody told her. It wouldn't surprise me if she willingly followed Mikan because she was nursing her. So, so Mikan volunteered to nurse us? Because she was planning to do this all along? That's a little... Aren't you like the thief who suspects everyone else of being thieves? I'm not a criminal. Mikon is. I mean, she's a killer, you know. You got it all wrong. Please forgive me. I'm sorry, but there's no way I can forgive you. I just can't forgive this crime at all. Um, forgiveness or not, we still have not decided if Mikon is the killer. <sighs> hmm, I see. You guys are kind. Well, if that's the choice everyone makes, then the only thing I can do is back off, I guess. But is that really okay? Is that everyone's hope? You're friggin' annoying! If you keep talking, I'm seriously gonna beat you up!
true? <laughs> stop it already! That's enough! I can't stop! I don't want to do this either! Of course I don't want to do this! But I need to do this! You... you doubt your friends? That's not it! I suspect them because I want to believe them! Well, what the hell does that mean? Um... I don't think belief and doubt are necessarily opposites. Huh? I do doubt her. But I still want to believe her. Belief lies at the heart of that conflict. Cause... If there's no room for doubt, then there's no reason to believe. Is there? D don't say deep stuff. I don't really get it. If you want to believe in someone, you need to overcome doubt first. Belief without doubt is simply a lie. Fine. Do whatever you want. I won't stop you anymore. Huh? Is that all you can say? Ah, so in the end, you're all just a bunch of bullies, huh? Justifying your actions with fancy words. Making excuses for why it's not really your fault. <laughs> Everyone always treats me like that. <laughs> always. <laughs> it's all her fault. She's the one with the problem. Hey, Mikan! It's not fair. It's not fair. 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 Why won't you forgive me? If you did something, you'd forgive yourself right away. What did I do? Why won't anybody forgive me? Is acting like this your strategy now? This is annoying. Plus, to be honest, I've run out of ideas. How can we get you to admit it? That's the issue. If we don't have any clues, why don't we have her give us some? I'm the same as Hajime. I don't want to doubt any of my friends. But still, the truth is one of us murdered two of our friends. We gotta stick with this until the very end, so we can finally break these chains of despair. Hey, Mikan, can I ask you one last thing? If you're not the killer, then who fabricated that video Hajime watched? Like I said, it obviously wasn't me! Can you prove it? P prove it? Wait! Do you have any proof? I'm the one who fabricated that video. <laughs> That's right! Show me your proof! <laughs> because you're just assuming the video was filmed at the conference room. Treating me like a killer based on an assumption. Just because I was at the hospital. <laughs> That's totally crazy! Just forget me already! Is this broad really okay? She's emotionally unstable. <laughs> I'm not the killer! <laughs> I never filmed that video! Hmm. It seems she finally started arguing for us. But the only one who can find the hole in her argument is you, Hajime. So. I'm going to leave this to you once again. Why do you get to decide I'm the killer? Where's your proof? Please, forgive me already!
We can't think of anybody else other than you who could have filmed that video. Huh? Do you have any proof? Is the hemp bag on her head the proof? Is the hospital gown she was wearing suspicious? Or could it be the hospital slippers she had on? Ibuki and Mikon clearly have different body types. Is that really your proof? You could tell her body type under the hospital gown? Just from that video? Just from that camera angle? Just from that dim candlelight? There's no way you'd be able to make out her body type! So please forgive me already! Hajime, pay close attention and listen well. You're the only one who can point out the killer's mistake. I'm not the killer! We can't think of anybody else other than you who could have filmed that video. Well, do you have any proof? Is the hemp bag on her head the proof? Is the hospital gown she was wearing suspicious? Or could it be the hospital slippers she had on? Ibuki and Mikon clearly have different body types. Is that really your proof? You could tell her body type under the hospital gown? Just from that video? Just from that camera angle? Just from that dim candlelight? There's no way you'd be able to make out her body type! So please forgive me already! Hajime, pay close attention and listen well. You're the only one who can point out the killer's mistake. I'm not the killer! We can't think of anybody else who could have filmed that video. Do you have any proof? Is the hemp bag on her head the proof? Is the hospital gown she was wearing suspicious? Or could it be the hospital slippers she had on? Ibuki and Mikon clearly have different body Is that really you? You could tell her body type under the hospital gown? Just from that video? Just from that camera angle? Just from that dim candlelight? There's no way you'd be able to make out her body type! So please forgive me already! Hajime, pay close attention and listen what you're the only <laughs> The killer's mistake. I'm not the killer! You can't think of anybody else other than you. Who could have filmed that video. Huh? Do you have any proof? Is the hemp bag on her head the proof? Is the hospital gown she was wearing suspicious? Or could it be the hospital slippers she had on? Ibuki and Mikon clearly have different body types. Is that really your proof? You could tell her body type under the hospital gown? Just from that video? Just from that ca camera angle? I'll shoot through that contradiction! Mikan, you've committed a major mistake. M mistake? As I said before many times, I'm the only one who saw that video. <laughs> What's wrong with that? But I never said anything about the camera angle. <laughs> so how can you say anything about the camera angle as if you saw that video yourself? The only reason Mikan knew the camera angle Hajime had seen is because you're the person who actually filmed that video. Is that right? This is your just reward. The more desperately you argue, the deeper you dig yourself into a hole. You lied, didn't you? Are you serious? Is it true, Mikan? Did you... Did you kill Hiyoko and Ibuki? Ah! <laughs> Forgive me! <laughs> I was wrong. 
wrong. No, no, that's not it at all. That's not it? I mean, it's impossible. You know that hemp bag Ibuki was wearing when she died? Try remembering the tote bag instead. Ding! I totally remember now. What the heck's wrong with her? She's getting weirder by the minute. That tote bag. Isn't it the same one that girl was wearing in the video? How do you know so much about that video? <laughs> Who cares about that? More importantly, did you know that bag is a limited item that was sold at the movie theater? Hajime saw it too, didn't you? You remember the Usami decal on it, right? Whoopsie! Don't worry about it. I remember even if you don't. Ta-da! There's no mistake that that tote bag is a limited item. So don't you think it's impossible? Using one tote bag in both the conference room and the music venue at the same time? It's blatantly obvious that that's impossible. Don't you think? That's why that video isn't fabricated. And I'm not the killer. So you'll forgive me, right? Taking your stubbornness this far. Such despair. Then you're gonna forgive me? I won't stop until you forgive me! should have received another one as a bonus prize. It's not impossible to use that bag in two separate places. Please, 
Just stop making desperate excuses. Why? Why can't you forgive me? Why? It seems her desperate struggle is finally coming to an end. Why does everybody always hate me? Nikon, it's already over. After I go over your crime from the beginning, it's just admit it already. In the end, at least let me believe in you. everything that happened in this case. The key to this incident is the surveillance camera video that only I saw. That's why I'm going to start with that to unravel the knots of this crime. When I went to the hospital with Nikon this morning, I noticed a specific thing in the lobby. The incoming signal light on the surveillance monitor was blinking ahead of the scheduled time. When I switched on the monitor, what appeared on screen was a person wearing a hospital gown and a bag on their head about to hang themselves right at that moment. That surveillance camera unit was designed for two-way communication with the hospital and the music venue. That's why I thought the signal originated from the music venue, so I immediately headed over there. was the killer's trap. In truth, that video was recorded in a different place. The killer brought the music venue camera the night before and made their preparations in advance. And then, they filmed that video in the hospital conference room. By doing so, they tried to make me think the incident was happening in real time. When in fact, the crime had already been committed by that point. The person in the footage wearing the bag was actually the killer acting as a fake. I didn't know that, so I went to the music room and found the hanged body wearing a bag on it. Seeing the body before me, I panicked and rushed out of there to get the rest of you guys. But that was also part of the killer's trap. After cleaning the conference room, the killer was likely watching the music venue from outside. And 
As if they were switching places with me, they went inside the music room and began working on their last trick. First, the killer peeled off the wallpaper covering one of the stage pillars, revealing Hyoko's body. When I first arrived and saw the hanged body, I didn't notice anything strange about that pillar. I didn't expect it to be slightly larger from the wallpaper, or have Hyoko's body hidden inside. Next, the killer destroyed the surveillance camera that was used in the conference room. After destroying it, they mixed it with what was left of the surveillance monitor found at the crime scene. The surveillance camera the killer used was originally brought from the music booth, but when they brought it, they made sure to destroy its monitor beforehand. They wanted to hide the fact that the camera wasn't at the crime scene. In the end, the killer transformed the crime scene into a closed room. They broke one of the drumsticks from the storage room and placed it near the music venue's entrance. However, they did this to mislead us into believing that the music venue was locked from the inside. In actuality, the reason the music venue became a closed room was because of the glue. The killer sealed the door with glue and intentionally created a closed room that could be forced open. With that, the killer finished tampering with the crime scene and met up with Fuyuhiko. They helped us force open the music venue door, despite the fact that they personally sealed it. And they made us discover not just Ibuki's body, but Hyoko's suddenly present body as well. At the time, they pretended to be surprised, but... Inside, they were probably relieved that their plan worked out. That's right, Mikan. This crime was orchestrated by you, wasn't it? <laughs> Whoa! Now she's laughing. It's been such a long time. This feeling, I know it well. Like the floor is collapsing. Like the sky is falling down upon you. This feeling of despair! M Mikon, you... What has happened to you? Whoa there! Before that, a moment of your time. It seems your arguments have reached a conclusion. So let's proceed to our regularly scheduled voting time. Now then, please pull the lever in who will be chosen as the blackened. Let's go! Hey, hey! Oh, that's 
is obvious. Hey. What? I... What? It cannot be. Perhaps. See? <laughs> That right. <laughs> I possible. Oh, <sighs> huh? What I did was for the sake of my beloved. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Reciprocation. <laughs> it's love. Hey. Oh? <laughs> no! 
that is. prepared a very special punishment! So it's over. It's really... Now I can go to my beloved. I can finally see them. Please forgive me. Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! Let me ask. Damn it. What? Isn't that right? <laughs> Please wait! as I thought. Hmm. However... Uh... Fine.
What's this? you waiting. Hey, what's going on? Perhaps you don't remember my face since we haven't seen each other in a while. That's pretty sad, you know? That's too much! <laughs> um, who are you? Huh? You too? What's going on? If you're messing with me, I'll stop doing it to you. Um, Nekomaru? Haven't you... noticed it yourself? What do you mean, noticed? Oh, you mean this body? <laughs> this is nothing! The name's Nekomaru Nidai! I've been reborn in the rivers of hell! <laughs> 